Good morning and welcome to a, another weekend reading vlog. I don't know when this one's going to go up because I have a few things going on vlog-wise. I have a vlog that just went up yesterday because I refused to edit it for a week for some reason. And then I have another vlog that I filmed concurrently, like I filmed it throughout the whole month. And that was a reading vlog for the Into the Drowning Deep, which we read for our Spooky Bitches book club. Sorry, my brain just like broke. So this weekend I am doing a few things but I wanted to check in with you first about what I'm reading right now. So we're still reading Wanderers. Um, there we go Angel. Still reading Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. This is the book about sleepwalkers that it seems like it might be some sort of virus or it might be like a biological war thing. I am starting the weekend on page. Let me see. 275 and I know I need to at least catch up to Celine who I'm buddy reading this with I believe they're on page like 360 right now so I'm going to try to work on that today and then I'm also working on buddy reading Junji Ito's No Longer Human this is actually a novel well a mangaization of a book by uh, Osamu Desai and it is a semi-autobiographical novel that is based off of um, for Osamu and Mm. <laughs> um, I just started this yesterday and I'm on page 158. It's interesting because you can kind of see it's the original work that it's based off of is semi-autobiographical and it's it's more alluded to but you can kind of see where there are things that are probably sensationalized. There's a lot of interesting like discussion about the main character's internal struggles and how they are viewed among their peers and the main character really struggles with actually feeling human and feeling like they can connect on a deep level with other people because they just feel so different and so detached and I find it really interesting so far but aside from that this weekend I'm going to go tomorrow and visit my grandmother because she is still healing from having fallen and so I'm going to try to get her to just relax and do some chores for her go grocery shopping if I can and just obviously hang out with her I love my grandmother so we're pretty close then on Sunday we have our spooky bitches book club I believe it's at two o'clock but I will have it doesn't matter at this point. Um, the recording of it, I believe, is going to be staying up on Brody's channel. So I will link you to their video down below if it's live by the time I... If it's still live by the time I post this video. And that'll be really fun. I need to film, like, one last clip for the reading vlog and put that up before the live show. So maybe during Saturday, tomorrow. Ugh. My brain is all over the place. I do not recommend filming two vlogs at once because it means that you just won't edit both of them. That's my experience. Look at Bento patiently waiting for the apple pie to be done. You're so patient. Oh, yes, I love you. I know, you just want to go back to sleep. You're like, stop annoying me, human. Oh, one more yawn. <gasps> what a blessing. I just filmed the final clip for my Into the Drowning Deep vlog, but I wanted to show you I made an apple. Oh, you can see. <laughs> I like to film in the bathroom, so don't mind that. Um, I wanted to show you my apple pie that I just made. I don't, I haven't made an apple pie in probably like a year or two, obviously, because we do that in the fall, but let's take a look together. Oh, please ignore this mess, the bubbly mess, but um, yeah, we made her kind of tall. She's not tall anymore because she's sunk with baking, but um, I'm so excited. Jose really likes apple pie, and I think he's going to be pretty happy with this one. We have some cracking. I think that's mostly just because we do um, pre-made dough and pastries, and I just kind of like didn't really do a pattern. I just kind of cut it willy-nilly. But yeah, I'm going to go and finish editing my Into the Drowning Deep vlog because I just needed to film that last clip because I finished it and so on and so forth. Um, let me actually go grab Wanderers because I caught up on that today too and I'm very proud of myself. Okay, we're just going to film in the bathroom because it's already set up. So, um, Wanderers, oh my god, I <laughs> don't know why I brought the oven mitts in here with me. I caught up, I caught up to where Celine is and I'm on page 368, so I actually lapped Celine. <laughs> I, I kind of beat where they're at right now and I'm really excited because it's been a minute. Like, this is a, a thick boy, I'm on page 368 and I'm like not even halfway through yet. At this point, the purpose, not the purpose, but what is going on with this like sleepwalking thing is continuing to elude us. <laughs> like 
CDC has been a little bit tested with if they're going to maintain control of the situation, if they're going to take it away and kind of give it to the government. There's also, um, th this is a, has a huge amount of characters in it. And I feel like they're each getting their time, which I really like because it is a longer book. So you're kind of getting that opportunity to really grow close to characters. I think the character I'm most skeptical on right now is probably between this one guy who's like a rock star and he's really full of himself and he's just like he's in his 40s or 50s he's in his 50s i think so he's definitely on the decline as like a popular rock star and he's just very full of himself but my favorite character right now benji is definitely a contender i uh, benji is working with the cdc in the past he did something really sketchy that got him like taken out of the CDC but they've kind of asked him back because they need his expertise. I'm also really liking there's a pastor named Matthew who is in this and he's recently come into a bit of fame as like a pastor that's talking on podcasts and you're starting to see him get very interested in the fame and being able to share the word of God with other people but he's definitely neglecting his family and his wife and becoming victim to the negatives of growing in popularity. I am gonna wait for the apple pie to cool down and definitely have some because oh my god it smells amazing in here now. And then probably tonight or tomorrow I'm gonna schedule that uh, Into the Drowning Deep reading vlog to go up because it took me like all month to film that because I just didn't read it consecutively and then I feel like I don't know I it gave it kind of messed up my brain because like as I was filming that I didn't want to film other content because I was getting more and more confused as to where the content was going good morning it, yeah it's still technically morning I am on my way to my grandmother's house up in northern New Hampshire not feeling great not sick but like I've been having eye strain in my right eye for a few days and I think it's finally come to a head I think I've just been reading for too long in like sort of dim lighting and then also driving up to um, northern New Hampshire the other weekend it was a long drive um, it was more or less what I'm doing today but I'm gonna try to be better about like just staring like I usually do and then also yeah so like the reading I was on the computer all week and I was really stressed out at work and then just to top it all off like I'm just a constantly focused person and so whatever I've gotten eye strain in the past so I know it's not like something terrible um, it's something that I, I get every so often because I have no control over myself. What I wanted to tell you was that I've downloaded an audiobook so that I can finish it literally while I'm driving. I believe it's called The Snow. If it's not, I'll put up the, the cover regardless. It's about a blizzard that comes and it's like, it's like one of those nor'easters. Like if you're not from around here, we get these winters sometimes where we'll just get like three feet of snow in a day, you know, casually. And it just gets to a point where like you can't plow through it and you just have to kind of wait for the town to take care of it and so it gets to that point where they're kind of like in a cabin and they're snowed in not able to get into town because nothing's cleared on the roads and they're there with some friends but it seems like there's something out in the woods out in the forest around them that is a bit supernatural maybe like some sort of sasquatch or animal thing and that's the main reason that I want to read it. It was actually recommended by Goodreads, like in that little bar over on the right, um, where it says like similar books are. And I was recommended a few books on there based on the cavern. And I think this was one of them because it has like a horror vibe. You're the night sky trying to make me see your stars. The dark gets lonely. Now I see violet. I can feel silence. The dark's all that I see when your stars have burnt out and your heart makes no sound. About an hour into the audiobook and I have some gripes. The first being that it's pretty homophobic. Well, no. It's mostly like just a bunch of like white dudes doing white dude things. There's been some homophobia. There's been some like general misogyny. And at this point now they're making jokes about trauma. Like they made a joke about Nam and they were like, oh, well, we're too young to be there. But you know, like that's the joke. And I'm like, maybe make an inside joke that's not about being at war and having PTSD. Nothing's also happened so far actual like plot wise it's gotten to a point where I think it's finally started to snow which I was mistaken it's actually July and they're in Ohio so it's about to like snow 
which is peculiar and in and of itself concerning. And they keep making a mention toward like, if we only knew what we knew now, as if something's going to happen, they're going to see something weird out in the forest. I'm like, just get to it, because the characters you created, I despise. They've made reference to Stephen King twice. They've been re making reference to like, kids these days. But I'm like, you guys are in your 30s and 40s. Like, I'm in my 30s. I'm kids these days. I just want it to get to the action point so that we're not so focused on the characters. Boy, oh boy, at least it's a short book. I'm heading home now. I'm actually gonna stop at Walmart and get some new leggings and I am going to stop at Joann's because I haven't been to the Joann's up here near my grandmother's house in a long time. I'm hoping they have some different fabric or maybe they just have some fabric that I wasn't able to get anymore at the ones near me because she's in a much more rural area. So I think it might be a little easier. I'm hopefully gonna finish the storm or the snow or whatever the hell this is called because I'm really <laughs> annoyed with this book. I'm hoping we can just zoom through this and then I can be done with it, but it's just another book toward my reading goal. It was one that I wanted to read, but at this point, not so much. I'm still puffy, I apologize. <clears throat> Uh, good morning. I just finished the snow because I had like five minutes left yesterday and I just didn't do it. <laughs> so I gave that a two out of five stars. It was not very good. And the main reason being all the things I talked about recently, misogyny, homophobia, racism, just being weird and not very like, it just felt like a boomer trying to make these cool jokes. Sorry, I'm fixing my hair because it looks like I just woke up, which I did. Um, it was very boomery. <laughs> and then a lot of those jokes, unfortunately, were about those things. And I didn't connect with them. They didn't hit for me. And then additionally, I feel like it spent a lot of time on the backstory of the characters at the beginning of the book. And that entailed like, just for, for a four hour book, let's start there. I wanted it to like just dive right in. This is what's happening. It's violent. It's aggressive. There are some creepy things in the woods and it didn't. It took like an hour to an hour and a half before it really got exciting. And when that excitement starts, I felt like it was very underwhelming because you've built up these characters to be these like really intensely interesting, interesting people. I mean, if you listen to people talk about them for that long, you are slightly interested. And then gonna read. I think the eye strain has been, I'm gonna, Celine, I'm gonna blame our buddy read, but I think it's just reading in general. I might try to read a little bit of our book and then I have to do laundry, which I might bump to tomorrow. But that's the plan for today. All right, it's Sunday night and I didn't film anything today. My eyes been like still, oh, you can't see it in the beautiful red light of someone else in front of me, but my eyes been still really bothering me. So I actually just went to Rite Aid and picked up some of that, uh, like the red eye, like dryness drops. But I am going to go to, uh, I'm going to call uh, Lens Crafters or whoever does eye appointments tomorrow and set up an appointment for this week because I'm like, it's been all weekend and it's kind of driving me crazy. I went to the laundry mat just a little bit ago and I actually almost finished No Longer Human by Junji Ito. It is the most sexual, grotesque, terrifying book that I've read probably ever, but I'm gonna give it a four to five stars unless something weird happens in the last like 20 pages here. But I didn't expect to finish that so quickly, but it was very good and the artwork for Junji Ito, Junji Ito is amazing as usual, but I will touch base with you in the morning once I have some, some better lighting. As promised, I just wanted to chat a little bit more about No Longer Human before the end of this reading vlog. So No Longer Human is a Junji Ito manga based off of a I think it was a story, but it's sort of like autobiographical. I talked to Jose about it and like he agreed from my description. It sounds like an avalanche of events, like just all happening back to back to back to back. And it's, it's as if you made a stream of consciousness into a manga. I would say, um, check out my Goodreads review once I put that up, like a more official one, because it'll have a lot of content and trigger warnings because this book was disturbing in almost every way that you can imagine. As my lighting gets worse and worse, <laughs> I'm going to end the vlog here. Let's see if I can 
I'm gonna end the vlog here and say thank you for watching if you got this far. Um, if you want to leave me like a car emoji since I've been driving while I've talked to you about this, that would be amazing. Or an eye emoji because my eye is still really bothering me. <laughs> I will see you in next week's vlog. It's gonna be a different one. I have some October reading plans, so keep an eye out for my TBR slash reading plans video that's coming out this week. It's gonna be it's gonna be different because I have some some plans. Like I have a whole bunch of holds and things coming in from the library. So keep an eye out and I will see you next time. Bye.